Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all and welcome to the channel. In this video, we will cover the conventions pertaining to naming a setter or a getter that we have covered in the encapsulation uh, lecture. <clears throat> So without any delays, we will start because this will be an extremely short uh, lecture. So we will start by creating uh, as a class, just in case people uh, have not watched the prior videos, that is why I always create the class uh, for every session. And we will uh, create a few uh, instance variables or fields or members. I will call this age and I will call this uh, GP, GPA. We will only use two instance variables for uh, the sake of simplicity, but your class could, uh, I mean, the number of instance variables is limited to your, the program you are creating, of course. <clears throat> now, I wish to create a setter and a getter for each instance variable. So, how would I create a getter? The convention for a getter, uh, you know what, let us return to um, paint here. We will start with the getter. The convention for a getter, at least the identifier of a getter is get and then the instance variable name. That is the convention. You, uh, as I said, it is a convention, so you do not have to adhere to it if you do not wish to do so. But if you are designing an API, for example, it would be easier if you use uh, get and then the instance variable name. That way people can understand what the, this function returns. When you have get and then the name of your instance variable, and if you have a descriptive identifier for the instance variable, people can understand the return type of this uh, uh, method. So let us return here and we will say public because we wish to access it in other classes. Get age. Oh. And uh, oh, I forgot the return type, of course, it will be int because getters return. Uh, it is a method that returns as opposed to void methods that return nothing. Technically, they do return, but we will cover that when we discuss uh, uh, return addresses for methods, inshallah, which is related to processor architecture. So we will say return um, this dot h. And that is it. Get age. So now whenever any person uses this class, they will know that get age retrieves the age of the student. And if I wish to create a getter <coughs> for the GPA, uh, get GPA, and then I will say return dot, uh, this dot GPA and I am done. Uh, these, of course, are new annotations. I just updated the IDE, so these are new. They were not there uh, previously. Okay, now let us see the convention for a setter. The convention is similar to a getter, where you say set instance variable name. And of course, you place the parameter here because it accepts a parameter. But as before, the convention involves adding the keyword set. Well, it is not a keyword, but adding the word set before the name of your instance variable so that people who are accessing your uh, program or your code can understand the, uh, the functionality of this function or method, sorry. Uh, normally methods are reserved for object-oriented uh, prog uh, programming languages, whereas functions are reserved for procedural programming languages such as C, for example, though technically C does have object-oriented programming to a degree. We will cover that in the C uh, tutorial. 
So I wish to create a setter and uh, a setter for age and a setter for GPA. Setters do not return anything, so we will use void. And I will say set age. And of course, I have to pass the parameter because I set the age as an argument when I pass it, as we discussed. So it will be int age. And uh, uh, parameters are arbitrarily named, so you do not have to use the same name as here. And then we will say this dot age here is equal to what I pass here. There. So now, because I used that this keyword, the compiler is able to differentiate between this and this. And the same for set GPA. And I will say this dot GPA is equal to GPA. And we are done. Inshallah, in uh, a later video, I will show you a third uh, party library that allows you to use getters and setters without typing this full list. Because if you have multiple instance variables, it would be rather tedious to create <laughs> setters and getters. But I will also show you a method you can use in IntelliJ itself to automatically generate getters and setters. You simply right click on an empty line and head over to generate or you can use the shortcut alt plus insert and then it will give you options. Do you wish to generate a constructor, a getter, a setter, a getter and a setter and other methods that we will cover later inshallah. So I wish to create a getter and a setter together it will ask you which for uh, for which instance variable do you wish to create the getter and setter i choose both and then okay and it generates it for me automatically that is uh, it for this lecture i hope this video was helpful and beneficial to you all <coughs> enjoy the rest of your day be safe take care and peace be upon you all wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh